Um, and people can do so called uh, doing centering. People often do mirror dimension or relative density. And you track this, which is very important in centering because you are doing so called densification. And the dimension change gives you a good idea of how dense you get to be. Make sense? And uh, simple, if you can do this so-called uh, density dimension measurement for each individual sample with no special equipment. You just use your furnace, center, and then measure dimension. You can get so-called centering kinetic behavior. You get a series of points something like this. Here I'm plotting relative density versus temperature. And for different, uh, for example, condition. Here you don't have to pay attention to the detail, but different condition. So called the five hour, 10 hour, whatever time. And then I get a so called uh, series of points. You see what I mean? A series of points, which means to get each point, I have to do one single experiment at a specific temperature for a specific, for example, time, right? And then I arrive at a specific density number. So to get these types of curve, I have to do a lot of individual experiments. Make sense? Similarly, I'm showing something related. I'm plotting relative density from low 65% all the way to one means fully dense. And then I'm plotting different holding time. And different holding time I plotted if I do centering along different uh, temperatures, right? Makes sense. You do centering at different temperature, and for different temperature, I do different uh, time. For each of these points, I have to do one experiment. And to get these series of curves, I have to do a lot of different experiments. Make sense? And then that gives me an idea of how fast I'm densifying at different so called condition, temperature time. Make sense? So, this way, I do not, you see my point, I do not need special equipment other than furnace. Take one sample, center, measure density, dimension, weight, I get the density. Make sense? I do not need, but it takes many samples. On the other hand, people can so called do continuous monitoring of centering. As temperature and time changes using an equipment called uh, dilatometry. dilatometry. You may heard of this word, or you may even use this instrument. Okay? Something that looks like this you have a furnace. And you have your marine loading unit sticking out, sticking out. And then let's zoom into this sticking out portion. You see the loading environment unit will be slided into the furnace for heating. Make sense? This you pull it out for loading sample, unloading sample. And then if we look at the sample loading section, this is the sample loading section. This gray part is actually your sample of interest. And to compare with it, people put a piece of so-called standard material, most or reference material, most likely a piece of sintered aluminous, aluminum oxide. And then you use two rods to push these against a base. And then doing this part is your thermocouple to measure the temperature. And then by measuring the thermal expansion, the sample dimension will change carefully with using piezoelectric ceramic. I can measure the small displacement. And by comparing the small displacement with respect to temperature between your sample versus reference, you will know at each temperature how much your sample expands or shrinks. Make sense? This is called dilatometry. 
And here I'm showing the telemetry result or shrinkage versus temperature for a material of zinc oxide. I'm heating at a constant heating rate. So the circle are for density. And you see, as the temperature goes higher, the density initially increase slowly and then increase rapidly and then saturate. Make sense? That's for density. The other curve is for shrinkage or relative density. Shrinkage. How much it shrinks? Okay. Shrink shrinkage. Initially, zero shrinkage is actually shrinkage is for the left side curve, yeah. and up to twenty percent, slightly more than twenty percent shrinkage in length. At the same time, the diameter may be shrinking uh, also a little bit. Make sense? The sample shrinking. Okay. And from these, we can get so-called uh, densification rate, which is unit one over second over temperature. And we find the fastest so-called densification rate occurs somewhere in this temperature range. And too low temperature, I have too low densification rate. Too high temperature, my skin tone is pretty much down. So of course, I also have lower densification rate. Make sense? Okay, let's stop here.